Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> right there. Right there. Right there. Oh, 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 here he is. Here he is. Oh, I see him. They are stupid camouflaged. That is the United States resident wandering spider. Are the most toxic, venomous spiders in the world. This might be one of the most venomous spiders in the US. So what the heck am I doing holding it? Well, to understand that, let me tell you a little bit about how we got here. So, day three in the wilderness. It's been a it's been a rough trip. It's been horrible! We've how how many things have we seen? Folks, I think the scientific term is technically barely nothing at all. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm in northern Florida with my good friend Jack from Jack's World of Wildlife on the hunt for venomous reptiles. We've heard legends of the giant rattlesnakes and beautiful multicolored coral snakes that lurk in the undergrowth of these longleaf pine forests, but neither of us have ever even seen them. As wildlife filmmakers and general enthusiasts of snakes and reptiles, scouring the wilderness of Florida in hopes of finding these rare and deadly creatures is a rite of passage, and one we're hoping to overcome soon, because when you upload weekly videos, getting good subjects for your documentaries can be challenging. I'm on a mission to uncover all of the natural world's best kept secrets, and I'll tell you, in my experience searching for eastern diamondback rattlesnakes and coral snakes, there are fewer better kept secrets than those guys. And after days in the woods with no sign of them, it definitely starts to weigh on you. We've seen a lot of really cool stuff so far in Florida. What? You're seeing the same thing I'm seeing, right? That, that's a Venus flytrap. But unfortunately, cool stuff does not a successful trip make. As our time runs out in Florida, we make a run to a swamp in the central part of the state as a last ditch attempt to get our targets. And our luck starts to head in a bit of a different direction. Our luck's finally panning out. I saw her dart across the leaves here. Have a look at this spider. Wow, that is a big wolf spider. Hi you, hi sweetie, come here. Look at what a sweetheart she is gorgeous giant wolf spider. We've been out here hiking for a few hours now and we were looking for reptiles initially, but uh, that hasn't stopped the spiders. They're these really fast erratic hunters, but they're actually also very intelligent. They use that intelligence to basically track their prey on the forest floor and it helps them process really awesome images. Those big eyes give them really, really good vision. Normally, they're hunting after dark. So my guess is something out here has startled her out from under a log or her burrow. These giant wolf spiders like this are actually burrow dwellers. It's pretty difficult to see the burrows in this really leaf covered environment. So she'd have perfect cover to hide just about wherever she wants. It's not a snake, that's for sure. But spiders are more our speed. For years, Jack and I have been studying some of the unique and dangerous arthropods that we share our planet with. From giant venomous centipedes, to rare and obscure crickets, to some of the deadliest spiders, we've made it our life's work to debunk a lot of the fears we've seen circling our favorite little creepy crawlies. The spot we're at has more than just wolf spiders. This is one of the holdouts of one of the most secretive venomous spiders in the US, the Florida Wandering Spider. Funny enough, when I found one a year ago, it was thanks to a lead Jack gave me. Before that, I didn't even know that wandering spiders were even in the US. Jack, however, has not seen any of these spiders before. And after his help coaching me through handling the deadly Brazilian wandering spider, I figured I'd help him get his lifer. So he set off into the swamp, looking for the Florida wandering spider's favorite habitats, hollowed out logs. Jack called out to me that he had something, and while it wasn't our wandering spider, it was certainly something very special that I did not expect to see in Florida. All right, we have just found a purse web tube right here, and uh, we are going to do our best to basically tempt this spider into coming out. Watch the base. There. There. Honestly, it's far enough up as they just cut off the bottom. Right there? Yeah, it's right there. You got him? We got it. You escape. There we go. Let's take a look. All right, check this out right here. One of my favorite little spiders. This 
is a purse web spider. This is uh, this is your first ever purse web, right? I know, I'm super pumped. She's super awesome. Now, usually I see them a little bit grumpier, but it is fall, so it is possible that she's just cold. Like, we're in Florida, but it's like low 60s right now. Yeah. So it's possible that she just is a little disoriented and a little bit chilly, and that's why she's not giving us her amazing displays. Mm -hmm. But it does mean that we can just safely handle her like this. Very yeah, relaxed, because... very fun. Those fangs are huge. I mean, they're like the length of the chelicerae. When you yep. see them fall back out, they're like, they're super long fangs. What's funny is this is like the last spider I expected to see here. We're actually out looking for the Florida wandering spider, one of my favorite arachnids of all time. Definitely a fun little lifer to include in the venomous spider adventure, but I think we've spent just about enough time with her and uh, we're gonna go back out in the field and see what else we can find. Our luck is really starting to turn around. No sign of our legless targets, but sometimes failure can be a bit of an opportunity. It's still morning and we're in good habitat for wandering spiders. If we knock this spider out, who knows what the rest of the day has in store. With improved morale, we head deeper into the forest in search of ideal habitat. Jack, how, how are you feeling about our chances of finding a wandering spider? I mean, you told me we were coming here to find some, but this habitat looks... It does look good. Delicious. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking somewhere between 70 and 96% likelihood that we're going to come away with, uh, with the wandering spider. He was unfortunately wrong. 96% wasn't a high enough guess, apparently, because as we came into another clearing, we spotted a log that was too perfect for a venomous wandering spider to be hiding in. Get in position in case we get something cool, man. Think of a flip? I'm gonna... Anything? Uh, maybe, maybe something little, I don't know. Okay, let's, let's, get, let's get to the big kahuna. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> Dude, right there, right there, right there. It's you a gotta get That's a pretty male. Oh, that's so beautiful. beautiful. It's right here, he's right here. Oh, do not get in there. Oh, 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 oh. here he is. Oh man, he's speedy. They are stupid camouflaged. Basically, they go quick. There. There we go. They can climb this too, <laughs> so we have to be careful. <laughs> Nice catch, dude. Dude, look how pretty that one is. I know, that one's killer. It does not ever get old finding these guys in the wild. I'm gonna see if I can't chase them out so we have a better look. There you go. Hi, right, buddy. Have a look at that. That is the United States resident wandering spider. As its name suggests, it's related to the Brazilian wandering spiders of Central and South America, the most toxic venomous spiders in the world. These guys, not 100% sure what would happen if you got bit. Ow! Just kidding. <laughs> you got me, man, you got me. As you can see, they're really uncooperative, fast, skittish spiders. They just are really difficult to present on camera. As you can see, like he's not wanting to bite me or anything, but what I don't want him to do is to go into my like shorts or my t-shirt or something and get pinched against my skin by my clothing. These guys are super, super light fearing, extremely nocturnal spiders, honestly, unlike a lot of things that I've seen before. And as a result, it can be a little difficult to film during the daytime because that even just this ambient cloudy sky is enough to make him really on edge. And what'll happen is if he gets in my shirt or my pants and gets pinched against my skin, he'll feel like he's being crushed and he'll bite to defend himself. And like I said, we don't know a whole lot about how bad the venom of these spiders are. And it's not something that I want to accidentally have happen. Look at you, buddy. They're really, really striking, really intricate pattern on their abdomen there. Very cool spiders. And not one that a lot of people know about. Now, I knew we'd have an off chance of finding them here at this location, deep in central Florida wilderness. So I actually found them here before, but uh, they're not necessarily common. And so far we're, we're three for three as some of my favorite spiders in the world. Uh, I don't know about you, Jack, what do you, what do you think? Should we, should we go a little further? Let's do it, man. Let's, let's, let's knock it out. Let's knock it out of the park. What else could we even get? Where we're at, we got a chance at like big regal jumping spiders and like red widows. Red widows, yeah. On red widow? Yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> let's do it. Let's, let's go for them all, man. <laughs> why, why stop here? That's right. We're going for it. We've knocked out three fan favorite spiders. Why not get the remaining two that call this part of Florida home? We stopped back at base camp so Jack could change into his lucky Red Widow shirt and headed out to a new spot. All the excitement seemed to 
really get to Jack though, so we needed a pit stop. Look at this man, look what he's about to do. I'll give you folks a hint about what old Jack at Jack's World Wildlife is about to get up to. <laughs> Take a gander, where are we? Does the, Jack World, does the Jack's World of Wildlife crap in the woods? He does. <laughs> the gun is shot in the background. Gotta do what you gotta do to find these spiders, you know what I'm saying? We're on an adventure. Turn around. If, any, if anything, that just goes to show that we are, we're out here. It's starting to rain, but you know, everybody's gotta deal with these kinds of conditions. We just gotta do the best we can with the conditions we've got. A little bit of rain never killed anybody. Might kill our electronics, but I'll, I'll kill some electronics to, to get cool spiders, I don't know. What do you think? In the waning hours of day, we hiked into the palmetto scrubs. We found some really cool stuff along the way. Look at the size of this no, regius in here. Hunting in this palmetto. Holy crap! Oh my gosh! You weren't kidding! No, no, that thing is a monster. Oh jeez, I'm not gonna wait. Where'd it go? Oh, she fell. She fell. That thing's wolf spider size. Oh. Now jumping spiders are one of the most intelligent, not just arachnids, but invertebrates in the world. And that cute appearance and their really almost curious movements can kind of clue us into it. These guys are actually doing some really cool stuff in that tiny little cephalothorax they've got. A lot of impressive, impressive calculations that are pushing the envelope of how we even know that cognition works. It's, it's fascinating. Those curious little movements can actually show you that the spider's thinking. It's piecing things together and trying to understand and puzzle out its environment, which can make for really, really interesting interactions. Right here, she's mostly a little bit stressed, trying to get back into the environment. You know, they're not aggressive or mean animals. That is just incredible. An amazing, amazing find by Jack and something I'm just so excited to see, which leaves only one more spider if we want to go crazy out here in Florida on our last day. The Red Widow. It seemed like most of the widows had already descended into their palmettos for the fall. Tired, hungry, and running out of usable light, we headed back towards the car. We figured we'd check a few palmettos along the way, but we were probably asking too much out of Florida, right? I was already putting together in my head how I'd string the previous spiders together into one cohesive video when Jack called out that he'd spotted something. What you got? Okay, so I saw this web. Hold on. Before we get any closer, a red widow is actively wrapping up a freshly caught grasshopper. Oh, I see it. Do you see that? I see it. I'm going to see if I can get in there and get a B-roll shot. Yeah. Let's what see if we can sneak in there. That is fantastic. That poor grasshopper must have oh my accidentally gosh. found its way into that web. And uh, that is not the place you want to be anywhere near a red widow. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> Look at her go. Oh man, this is one of the most amazing spiders we possibly could have found out here. Let me see if I can uh, chase her out a little bit. Or we can get her. Hi you. Hi, look at that. That is a red widow spider very careful here because I know firsthand this is not a creature to underestimate. Oop. Got her in a container. Oops. All right. Oh. Have a look at that. Oh, one of the most legendary spiders in the world and definitely of North American wilderness. Let me get comfortable here for a second. I need all of my focus on this spider. It does not get any more nerve wracking than that. Right there, we have the red widow spider. We've been out here for hours hunting throughout Florida wilderness and to end the day with this creature right here, that is, I tell you, that is something I will never forget. We've gotten giant wolf spiders, purse web spiders, Florida wandering spiders, giant jumping spiders, and finally, this magnificent creature right here. That coloration, where they get their name, is warning. See, they live in palmettos. There's no camouflage in the palmettos when you're bright red, 
on jet black. This spider wants to be seen because it wants to tell you, hey, I am dangerously venomous. And if you mess with me, I'm gonna mess you up. Since she was just feeding on that grasshopper, she's stressed out. You can even see kind of in her movement, she's a little bit, a little bit finicky, a little bit, a little bit jumpy. It's a behavior I've learned to actually look out for now. And I would say that this individual spider is probably not safe to handle, so I'm not gonna risk it. That's perfect. That's all we need. These spiders don't wanna be picked up. They don't wanna be bothered. She wants to go back about her life, living in these palmettos, eating grasshoppers, eating beetles, other insects in these nice fly-through zone habitats, and just be a cog in the machine that is that secret world that we live in. These animals are magnificent parts of our ecosystem, and the sad thing is that, scary or not, these red widows are disappearing. They need this specific habitat to survive. The more we clear-cut forests and encroach on the areas they live, the less habitat they have to live in. These spiders are an integral part of our secret world, and it's why I love seeing them in the wild. Fortunately, this population is doing all right, for now. And Jack and I will do our part to protect these amazing creatures for generations to come. It's why we go after all these dangerous animals in the first place, because deadly or not, they deserve a voice too. And the more we learn about even the creatures that scare us, the more rich and fascinating the world around us becomes. If you want to see even stranger creatures than these spiders, join Jack and I on a nighttime adventure in these northern Florida swamps in the video right here. We got up close and personal with some really gnarly creatures, so I hope to see you there. But until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.